Thank you, Sage. Thank you, Preston. Thank you, Cleveland State. I was there in the 1980s. Had the privilege of working with Curtis Wilson. But I knew Ralph Pruitt. I knew Howard Mims was there when Mike Williams was hired, worked with Dylan Poole, worked with Frank Adams. Professor Wilson gave me free reign. And we were able to bring Farrakhan, Baraka, Margaret Walker, Gwendolyn Brooks, Ivan Van Sertema, Harold Cruz, other luminaries. But for me, this is about Curtis Wilson, who made a profound impact on me as a poet, as a researcher, and he helped me put together one of my most significant works. It's an epic poem in honor of Shekanta Jalap. It's called Poem for the Living. I am Gorilla Dread, forever the poet, griot, speaking, singing, seeing, remembering, storytelling, being in the moment, capturing those moments in lyrical word time. Curtis Wilson was Alabama bred and Br'er Rabbit wise. He was one of those people who saw things in me I did not see in myself. He marveled at what he called my ability to see into a thing. He stressed that I should never take for granted this gift for being able to put into words those not so secret things so many black folk think and feel and experience. He sent me back south to become one with the countless black stories that still need to be told. He made me realize the importance of going into the black belt before going home to West Africa. He understood that in learning black people's real story, I would find and would come to know my own. For Curtis. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child a long way from home. To whom do I say it is because of our living dead that I speak? Hear their words the words of our departed, the faces forgotten or never seen, the lives intuitively felt, the dream dreaming of our dead inhabiting our bodies, making us ache. Africa, what is Africa to me? The questions remain the same. County Cullen wanted to know why God would make a poet black, make a poet black, and bid him sing. Langston lamented Afro-American fragments. They knew the feeling. They bore the cross black poets have to bear. Singers and poets move amongst every people. Even in this America, too blind, arrogant, to remember, to care. The poet's journey is personal when people 
have forgotten how to listen to the real power inside our own soul. It began as inner feeling, as feeling before, beyond words. It was there before I learned the meaning of my own blackness. Little boy times and innocent questions that altered expressions on adult faces. In Sunday school, I wanted to know if God was white like the pictures of his son, Jesus. Questions left unanswered, questions that would root my words deep in the soul soil of an age-old poet tree. It was not for me to know we were black dreams born into flesh. I knew only that my mother and grandmother fussed and fumed over little Smitty. I remembered nothing of storied sleepless nights. My mother sheer willed her man-child into the light of each new day. I remember my South Carolina Gucci grandfather who refused to speak the white man's tongue. Who watched them Yankees and the Rio Sugar Ray. Who chewed cigars and drank homemade wine from Jersey urban earth. My grandfather, dressed in his Bethsaida Baptist Church blue suit, hands folded, lying coffin still, looking more asleep than dead. I can never forget the look on my father's face when he watched television the day assassins gunned Malcolm down. I remember the power of that silence, that Wilbur Smith had been one on the black, blue, collar, middle class block who talked to the brothers who sold the Mohammed speaks. How could I know Malcolm's vision then? It would be years before I would know the man, magic, magic man in Malcolm's voice. It was not for me to know the fire in my father's eyes would soon flame inside my own. What happens? What happens to a people? After all the years, after the private corners of our nights, after the acceptance of pain in our lives, after the coming of age of our agelessness, what happens to a people born of grandmothers left to scrub the venom the white people put into calling us nigger black on cold water wash basin mornings grandmothers scrubbing grandmothers and amens grandmothers and hallelujahs grandmothers and thank you jesus grandmothers and the will to wish we little ones would never grow to know nigger black and old Grandmothers, what happens? A surreal strangeness being in places still forbidden. A new plainness. Too many black people still cannot look the white people in the eyes. We still live for massa until we die. Long for a freer freedom, looking for signs. Where are we today? Are we today? Ancient seeds sown, we harvest American days. Black pilgrims to the new world dragged this way. Gambia River through Gold Coast Barracoons to Caribbean Sea. Congo Heartland to Virginia descended from enslaved Africans. We are still unfree. What happens? From pyramid builders to the cheap labor, too cheap to be needed in the new prosperity. Black men, faceless, black. Where are we today? Are we today? 
But what is today if not the newborn of yesterday and elder brother of tomorrow? What people can afford to forget their yesterdays? What happens? What happens? What happens? Thank you.